Well, friends, you're all having so much fun that I hate to interrupt you, but we're going to go ahead and get started. For those of you who just arrived, my name is Amy Joy Tofty. If I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet, please come and introduce yourselves to me. I'd love to get to know you. Just want to say to you that you are here because we recognize that we are who we are because of what you do. What you do matters. What you do is having an eternal impact in the lives of young people, but much more than that, really in the lives of families. You're creating a community and a safe space where students can come and wrestle with big ideas. They can grow in their character, in their understanding of God's word, and, and it matters. What you're doing really matters. And so we know that Christ commanded us to go out into the world and make disciples, and you are going into the harvest field, and you are bringing in that harvest. So I just want to open us in a word of prayer, and then we'll get started. Father God, we thank you that you are so good to us. Lord, we know that you have eternal plans and purposes that exceed anything that we can imagine. So God, I pray that you would keep our eyes focused on you. Lord, help us not to be distracted by the things of this world the culture around us, because, Lord, we know that you are calling us to greatness. You are calling us to go out into the world and to bring glory to your name, to point people to you, to meet them where they're at and build bridges. So, God, I pray that you would give us wisdom as leaders. I thank you for these leaders in this room, God. Would you refresh them even as they have refreshed others? Would you breathe new life into them? Would you remind them of their why? Would you remind them that you have a call and a plan and a purpose, and it's not about medals or tournaments or certificates. It's about raising up a generation of young people who choose to follow you with their whole heart and their whole mind and their whole strength. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on your purposes. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to laugh and to cry, and to enjoy each other. God, that when we walk out of this place, we will know that the Lord was present in this place and that he has refreshed us for the next season that lies ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so how many of you are writers or have ever written a short story? Anybody ever done that? Okay, great. So there is a, a format of story writing called the hero's journey. Anybody ever heard of that? Great. Okay. So I'm Amy Joy. I already said that. Okay. So I want to talk about an epic adventure, and I'm going to need a little audience participation. So how many of you have read J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit? Oh, good. Good, good, good. All right. So who is the hero of the story? Just shout it out. Bilbo Baggins. That is a name. How many of you thought about naming your child Bilbo Baggins? <laughs> Just saying. Okay. So Bilbo Baggins starts the story, and where is he? Mm -hmm. Yep. And he's in his little home, and he's all snug as a bug, and then somebody knocks at the door. So who is the person that calls him to adventure? Gandalf, that's right. And Bilbo says, sure, let's go. <laughs> or not. Bilbo says, thank you very much. I'd really rather stay in my nice, comfortable home. And so Gandalf does what any good mentor does. He brings some traveling companions and introduces to them. And boy, they were a crew, right? He brings in all of these um, really unusual band of misfits. And he says, here, do, do you want to go on the adventure now? Here's who you get to go with. Don't look around the people on your table. Yes, they are your companions, but they're not a child. All right. Frankly, Bilbo Baggins would prefer just to stay at home, but he does go on the adventure, right? And he doesn't get to the destination. He doesn't get to the goal without first going through a lot of pitfalls, a lot of problems, a lot of wrestling. This sounds like club leadership, but ultimately, there are victories, there are victories in our students' lives. There are victories in our lives as God teaches us through them. There are victories in families. 
families that are walking in lots of conflict and have this opportunity to come together to discuss these issues together and restore relationships. So today, we're gonna take you on an epic adventure. And you are the hero of this story. And we're gonna talk about the problems and the pitfalls, and we're gonna look for the victories. But I want you to remember this. You are the heroes. You are the ones who have stepped out into the adventure, and even though it's tough, you're making a difference, and God is using it for his eternal glory. So we have some guests that are gonna join us here today. But I wanna remind you of our theme for this week. It's soaring together. And I love this scripture passage. We're going to see it in everything we do today. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So we could spend the next two hours telling tales, club <laughs> woes, all of the things that have gone wrong this year. And we do want a safe space where you can run some of those things past your friends and ask for counsel. That's really important that we have an authentic space where people can wrestle. But we also want to talk about how we can turn those obstacles into opportunities. And that's what our focus is going to be. So before we do that, we're going to have a little fun. We're going to find out a little bit about the people in this room. And so I'm going to ask a question and show you some answers. And then I'm going to call out those answers one at a time and have you stand up. And speaking of authenticity, you have to be authentic when you're answering, OK? So here we go. The first question is, who or what introduced you to NCFCA? OK? And here are your options. A friend invited us to a club or a club-sponsored event. A friend invited us to watch or judge a tournament. I just wandered into a tournament to see what was going on. I saw a post on social media. Or my student attended an online camper intensive. So let's start with the first one. Stand up if a friend invited you to a club or a club-sponsored event, and that was your first introduction into NCFCA. That is awesome. And that should make all of you feel exceptionally good about what it is that you do. OK? All right, have a seat. How many of you would say a friend invited us to watch or judge a tournament? Kudos to our judge recruiters who are actually recruiting families into clubs and NCFCA as well. Yes, that is great. Thank you so much. All right, the next one. I was just walking down the street, saw a bunch of kids dressed in suits, so I decided to wander in and see what happens. Said no one ever. <laughs> All right. How many of you, your first introduction to NCFCA was a social media post? Wow. I am impressed. I was not sure anyone would answer that question. We're so excited for our new marketing director, are we not? Oh, my goodness. She has so much life. Yes. All right. And last but not least, my student attended an <coughs> online camp or intensive. So I think this is really important to note. The majority of us came, first of all, in those first two groups. Because what? A friend invited us. So my story is no different. My son, John, um, was 12 years old. It was obvious that sports were not going to be in his future. Um, the funniest entertainment we had is trying to watch him jump rope. <laughs> no words, no words. Um, but an uh, older student, Miles McLean, uh, invited him to come to a speech and debate camp. And he just said this. He said, you know, John, you like to talk. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. And he said, I really think that you'd be good at this. Would you want to come and give it a try? And that changed the trajectory, not just of John's life, but of our entire family. And I want to, again, encourage you. You guys are the hands and feet of what we do. You are the ones who are inviting people to get connected, not with an organization and not with an activity, but with a community. And it's essential that we all keep that in mind. So post your things on social media. Invite your folks to judge recruit. But remember, that's a really important part of what we do. All right, so this one's easy. The next question is, which best describes your experience with your local club? So how many of you have been in club for less than a year? 
Any new, ah, new club leaders. <laughs> nice. All right, how many of you have been in club for one to two years? Nice, thank you for coming back. We appreciate you. How many have been involved for three to four years? Excellent, thank you. And this is my favorite. How many of you have been involved for more than four years? Unbelievable, unbelievable. Thank you so much. Wait, don't sit down. Because now what we're gonna do is stay standing if you've been involved in club for five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years. I'm not going to say that the rest of you are old, but 10 years, <laughs> 11 years, 15 years. <laughs> Need. I'm pretty sure it's more than 15. 20 years. 20 years. That's commitment. And I think about all the students who have passed through that club. Students like my son John, who found his people, his community, and eventually his faith in this place. What you do matters. But we also know that it's always not perfect. So the next question is, which best describes your club? Is it shriveling, stagnant, growing, or thriving? And hear me, this is not a judgment. This is a reality check for all of us, okay? So how many of you would say that your clubs are shrinking? They're getting smaller. You have few, go ahead and stand up, go ahead and stand up, okay? And we wanna talk about that. Why is that happening? What is happening there? What can we do about that? How many would say, nah, we're just stagnant. We're not growing. We're not getting smaller. We just pretty much stay the same every year. Okay, thank you. How many of you would say, our clubs are growing? Yeah. Very good. I love that. Okay, so I want you guys to talk a lot today because we need to learn from you what is really working. And then I really want to ask this question. How many of you are thriving so much to the point that you're having to limit your club membership? <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very, very much. It's going to be a great conversation today. I can feel it. All right. Last question. Which best describes you as a leader? And again, no judgment. Be real here. <laughs> Apparently, I don't have a slide. For that. <laughs> <laughs> which tells you which one of these I am. All right. <laughs> How many of you are exhausted? Where is the off ramp or at least a nap room? The exhausted club leaders. All right, here's the next one. I'm terrified. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Yes. <laughs> love you, Rosie. Love you. I'm frustrated. Why can I not get anyone to help in club? OK. And the rest of you, I'm pumped up. Let's do this. All right, awesome, awesome. <laughs> oh, and how many of you are all of the above? <laughs> That's great. All right, so we're going to take some time now to get to know the people around your table. Hopefully there are some new faces to you. If there aren't, could I just encourage you to mix it up? Be bold and just say, yeah, we need to do a table swap because I know every single person at my table, okay? So we are going to take some table talk time, and this is just to introduce yourself, tell a little bit about who you are, and then share one item on your bucket list. And if you are not a list-making person, that just means someone you'd like to meet, something you'd like to do, or somewhere you'd like to go, okay? So we're going to take about 10 minutes to do that. So try to make sure that everyone gets to share once before anyone shares twice, and we'll come back in 10 minutes. Um, something 
hearing over and over again to debate. It took me a few years for to I mean, even I mean, enough to do this. That was how I really just sat there. I think of you going. I think of you going to the results of the end of it, and I'm like, I want to. Okay, hopefully you learned some interesting things about the folks sitting at your table. I'm curious who had the most exotic item on their bucket list. Anybody want to share their... Ah, Miley. <laughs> what, was your, what was your bucket list? Yes. Iceland. Ooh, Iceland. Very good. Can anyone top Iceland? All right. Oh, what do you have? somebody praying for the downfall of the CCP. I was impressed by that. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Well, our next activity is called Rose, Thorn, and Bud. And so what I want you to do is think about your club and the interactions of the folks in your club. And the rose is write down or tell your group a positive highlight from club this year. The thorn is a challenge or a roadblock, something that you hit, you just still don't really have a solution for, it was really tough. And then the bud is an idea or an opportunity for the future. So we're gonna give you about five minutes to do that. You can write those down on the note cards that you have, or you can share those amongst yourself. And we'll be back here in five minutes.
And then you're like, be quiet, please, be quiet, please. <laughs> So I'll, I'll kind of say, kind of like what Prof. Six said, you know, one day you might be a club leader. <laughs> They'll be like, ha, ha, yeah, right, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so kind of like, oh, wow, you've got some great leadership skills. You can make a great club leader <laughs> one day. You laugh a little bit every more. time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, friends, we're going to come back together. Would anyone like to share their rose? Something really exciting that happened in your club this year. Sure. I didn't get a chance to share my <laughs> well, I'm going to share now. Um, we found an awesome apologetics coach, and I could not be more thrilled. Okay. We went to seminary, very quiet mom. She was brand new last year, didn't say a whole lot. She and I were in club one day, came out that she had gone to seminary, and she has turned out to just be huge blessing to our club. So she is telling us that she, they had a really quiet mom in their club. So watch for those quiet ones. <laughs> Turns out that she had gone to seminary and is now serving as an apologetics coach and is really good at that. So yes, don't overlook those quiet people. They're amazing. <laughs> amazing. All right. Would anyone like to share their thorns, something that they've struggled with in club or continue to struggle with? Thank you, Heather. So Heather's just talking about the difficulty in finding like-minded facilities that will host us for a reasonable price. So that's really great. Um, Heather, you're going to be happy to know this. Our board member, Ann Langdon, at another one of these brainstorming sessions, we were talking about dream big, and we asked people to write down what's the biggest dream you can dream. And Ann dreamed that we would just purchase facilities all over the place. And actually, while we were at it, we would have jets that we could take to each other's clubs. So. Wow. I think that's definitely. We're going to Hawaii. We're going to see the Higashi. <laughs> All right, so in light of our roses and light of our thorns, does anybody have a bud, an idea for the future that you think would be really helpful for club or for clubs? Yes? Um, one of the things, we were at Nationals Prep uh, about two weeks ago, and 
I'm talking to some of the moms there, and one of the, it's very intimidating to either start a club or be in club leadership. Um, I hate reinventing the wheel, so um, our club for communication uses a platform called Band, but whatever platform you choose would work. But I think a regional a club leaders group on some kind of platform to share resources, to share ideas, videos, whatever works for your club, and just kind of have an email where it's hard to have a discussion. Um, that was an idea that I had. So. I love that. So finding some type of a platform where club leaders, club leaders could meet together on a regular basis just to talk about ideas and to encourage one another. Love that. Okay. Well, it is my pleasure now to invite to the platform our NCFCA board founder. So Christy Scheip is not only um, well known around this league, she's a personal friend and, it, and I'm so excited for you guys to hear just a little bit about how our mission and values developed and then get a history of where we've come from so that you can understand where we're going. So Christy. Thank you, Amy Joy. I'm so excited to be here and to see all of you and just wanna reiterate what Amy Joy has already been saying about how grateful we are for you and for the work that you're doing. I know it's hundreds of hours and we are so excited that you're here. We're so excited that you're a part of NCFCA that you are taking on this holy task of discipling kids and, and sharing our mission with us, right? To challenge and equip ambassadors for Christ. That's who we want them to be. That's who they are. That's who we all are. We are ambassadors for Christ. And to challenge and equip those ambassadors to communicate truth with integrity and grace. And just imagine for a moment what that would look like if all ambassadors for Christ around the world were doing that, what if we were all communicating truth, really grounding ourselves in what is true from God's word, from his perspective, but doing it in a way that has integrity, right? The utmost integrity. So I'm a debater and debate coach, and I think, you know, like, fantastic sources, well-researched, great logic, but also just integrity in the way that we do everything according to the values of Scripture and of our Lord, but then also graciously, right? Not strident, not angry, not fearful, but gracious and loving. And I know you all share this mission with us. And that is why you're here. That's why I'm here. That's what we want for our young people, for ourselves, for our community as ambassadors for Christ. And so I thank you for joining us in that mission. And I just want to remind you um, what our values are too. Just we've, we spent the last, I guess it was two years ago where the board really sat down and spent some time identifying, okay, we know our mission, but what are the values that help inform that? What kind of culture do we want to create? And so these values, I think, help inform that culture, and it helps inform our decision-making. As a board and as a league, I, th I hope it trickles all the way down into your clubs as well. And the first one is, is first for a reason. The first one is godly wisdom. It comes from the Lord. We want everything we do to be integrated into scripture, into truth. And the wisdom that we share is not the wisdom of the world. It is godly wisdom. And an interesting aspect of this godly wisdom is that it doesn't just involve facts and knowledge, but it also involves the skill to use those facts and knowledge in a, in a right way. And it also involves holiness, right, and, and being in line with God's um, morality, if you will. But when the Bible talks about wisdom, it includes things like the way God created the, the world in wisdom. And it's not just that he had these great ideas, it's that he did it skillfully. When we look out at creation, I mean, it should blow our minds how amazing it is, how beautiful it is, how well done it is. And that's part of having godly wisdom 
is applying our knowledge in a very skillful and beautiful way. So that's part of our value as NCFCA. Secondly, redeeming truth. This is one of my favorites as well. Because yes, we are grounded on the truth, and that ultimate standard is God's word. We are grounded in that, and it, but it's not like a truth that I hit you over the head with, right? It's a redeeming truth. We are ambassadors for Christ, and if you look at that where that uh, phrase comes from, 2 Corinthians 5, it talks about we've got this amazing, great, awesome message to tell the world that God is no longer holding people's sins against them, but has sent his son to pay the penalty for that sin and to give us freedom and life. This is an awesome message we have to share. And we can share that redeeming truth into every area of God's creation. So our vision isn't just for like politicians and lawyers to go share redeeming truth in politics and law, but for everyone, for engineers, for nurses, for moms, for dads, for pastors, every kind of field, the arts, everyone, for these ambassadors for Christ to go into all of those fields and share God's redeeming truth within that area. What does redemption look like? What does God's truth and redemption look like applied to the arts? What does it look like uh, applied to the medical field? What does it look like in a home? Right? So that it is an all-encompassing vision. What does it look like imply, applied to creation and nature? That is our job as ambassadors to, for Christ, to bring that redeeming truth into all the areas and into the places where you're gifted and where your children are gifted. Then we have gracious communication, which I talked about a little bit. We don't just want to communicate. We want to do it graciously, winsomely. Again, speaking as a debater, I tell my students, you don't win people over by yelling at them, <laughs> right? That's not persuasive. And we want to, I mean, it, it, it can get tough, right, in, a, in life and in the debate round to not let your anger get the best of you. Not only is it not persuasive, it is not honoring to God. So we want to model gracious communication. We want to uplift gracious communication as a value mm -hmm. in this league. Enduring excellence, I think, has long been associated with NCFCA um, through past leadership as well. That's really, I, I think we're, we are enjoying the fruits of an excellent legacy. And so we still want to uphold that value. And when we say enduring excellence, I, I want to point out that we don't want people running themselves into the ground in order to achieve some standard of perfection because that's not enduring, right? You burn out. So that's not what we're talking about here. Kill yourself to be perfect. No. No, we want to do everything um, with all of our hearts, you know, as for the Lord and not, not to men. And one way to honor him is to do that in a way that still gives him first place in our lives, gives him the time that he deserves, the time that we need in the word every day, in prayer, you know, all of that with our families, balance across our lives. Um, and then finally, constructive community, which I think is a great value to talk about here. We've been doing that a little bit through all of these tables, through creating, Amy Joy has led us through just even creating little communities around your table right now and being able to share and help each other become better. So, and constructive community includes, and from the board's perspective, the ability to share in a gracious way critiques, right? So we welcome that. I welcome that um, for you to write in and say, hey, here's a problem that I've noticed. We would love it if you have a solution idea as well. <laughs> but we want to be better. We don't just want to all say, ah, let's look the other way and not acknowledge we have problems or things could be better. We do want to be constructive. And like our verse for the theme week, uh, our theme verse for this week says that we would speak things that are building each other up. But it is building each other up to point out, hey, I noticed this issue, this problem. Let's work to make that better. So I want to invite you to have that kind of dialogue amongst yourselves, with the board, with your leadership, 
we welcome that. And so let's, uh, as we start to look forward, where do we want to go as a league with clubs and our relationship as the national leadership with clubs? I first want to take a little step back and look at the history there. Um, I'm uniquely equipped to do that because I started the league in 1997. Um, as part of, I, I was forced to do it by my father, for the, those of you who <laughs> know that story. So I was forced into it. You didn't, Amy Joy didn't have forced into it by your dad up there on how did you get into the league, but. <laughs> so it first started um, under the banner of HSLDA, the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, and just started with debate. And the very first thing we did, because there was nothing, I mean, there was, nobody is doing it in the homeschool community. So we saw the need to bring this kind of activity to homeschool families. And the very first thing we did is we developed a curriculum that taught how, just the very, very basics of how to get started with policy debate. That was our first event. And so we developed that curriculum and we just sent it out to all of the state leaders throughout the country. That was our step one. And out of that first blast of 50, 50 state leaders, we had eight of them take us up on it. <laughs> so our first national tournament had 16 teams, I believe, because we said every state can send two. And so we had eight states, we had two teams from each state. And as you can already tell, that's very different from the way we do things now. But that's how it started, just as like, hey, we're gonna send you out this little how-to manual, how to teach debate, and send us some competitors and we'll hold a national championship. <laughs> um, so that's how it all got started. And from there is where the clubs obviously spawned from that because as the kids groups together to have those initial first tournaments, well, that led into these brave souls who'd never done it before being willing to also kind of start and lead clubs. So those were our very first clubs. But then I believe it was, it was very early on, the late, like maybe 1999, maybe 2000, where a woman named Teresa Moon got involved in the league. Anyone know Teresa Moon? Okay, I was going to say Mead with the 20 years for sure. Has anybody in a club that was started because of uh, Teresa Moon and her Communicators for Christ group? Anybody? Okay, there's still somebody here. So Teresa Moon really got our clubs going to the next level. Because what she did was she traveled around the country with a team of um, NCFCA high school students, and they were her interns, and she went around and she held little uh, three, four-day events where she taught you, hey, here's how to do speech and debate. And those kind of created, again, those natural communities where people had come to the event, and now some parents got excited, and they decided to go ahead and take that plunge and start a, a club. Yep. And so we had this natural feeder system for a good, a good decade. And then um, Teresa felt called into some other areas and she moved on. And during, after, after she moved on in the last several years from that transition point, we realized, hey, we don't really have a good mechanism in place for helping to start new clubs. How do we do that? Um, the, some things we've been talking about are related to the fact that my husband and I are church planters. And so we have come from a church, which is awesome, right? It's this awesome, thriving church. Everyone's great. But then you realize, hey, more people need this. So who's going to be willing to kind of come out from that thriving group and go out and plant, am I hitting some people over here at this table? <laughs> go out and plant some new groups because there's more people that need this. And as ambassadors, I know it's tempting to just want to be the holy huddle, right? But we really, we need to catch that vision to go out and to spread it to more people. And maybe some of you know who you are, there's kind of that group that's driving in from a far away, and you might think about, maybe the Lord is starting a little something over here with these families that are all coming to this other big club, but we could start it in this place where we all live. And that is a, such a great way to create community, by the way. 
to have community with people that you really you live near. So we've got some ideas. They're not all fleshed out yet, um, but Kim is going to be talking about some of the concrete things we have coming for you. We really want to develop um, a close relationship with you. We really want to help support you in all the ways that we're uniquely equipped to do as a national organization. But we are not equipped to be that community in your area that has that personal contact and discipleship of your kids. That's what you do. We can't do that. But we can help each other. We need each other to accomplish this mission. We can't do it on our own. You can't do it on your own. But together, we can do this. And so we want to talk about ways we can support you more fully, what you need from us. And we want to talk about ways that we can help, um, I'll call it uh, club planting, <laughs> to really take off and thrive. Uh, so with that, I will turn it back over to Amy Joy. And thank you so much for allowing me to be here. So next, we're going to hear from someone who's also been there, so has taken this journey with NCFCA over many, many years, and now is getting ready to go into the next season of her journey. And she's just going to share with us a little bit of what God has done in her life and in her family. So would you welcome Linda DePasacreta? This is an incredibly intimidating group to be in front of, I have to say. And it is interesting because um, of all days, I dropped the tie of my dress into the toilet. So, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we're all laughing. So who am I? Um, I am Linda DePasacrita. I have a crazy last name. That's why the entire world calls me Mrs. D. I'm just Mrs. D. There are about to actually be two more Mrs. D's joining my family, which is super exciting. But I'm like, no, you can't be Mrs. D because I'm Mrs. D. Anyway, I do have four children. Um, and if that wasn't obvious, I have two about to be married. Um, I was born and raised in Massachusetts. So I'm from the far northeast corner of NCFCA. I finished my college degree in London. And I have a theater degree. I do have four children all together. And I'm married to the absolute best human being on the planet. His name is Ken. He's clearly the better half. <laughs> um, so where have I been? It's a really good question. First of all, I was thinking about Christian Scheib, who I've never met personally. Hi, how are you? But we are, we are not even separated by six degrees. This is so cool. So my son, Josh, graduated from Moody Bible Institute two weeks ago. His favorite professor is Dr. Norris. Okay. Okay who was Christie's college roommate, right? All four years. See? Not that far separated. <laughs> right there. I've had the privilege of serving in two clubs, one in Massachusetts when I lived there, and it was a small group called TACT, for anybody who knows it, run by the amazing, awesome Ann Barnt, for anybody who knows her. And I loved working with Ann, and then just in her journey, it sort of shut down, and then that fateful day in 2018, at the airport coming to nationals, and Heather Merch says to me, hey, do you want to coach speech at Snow Club? I was like, yes. So I have been the speech club coach at Snow Club in New Hampshire now for seven years, six years, since 2018, whatever that is. It feels like forever, but not really that long. Um, and so, you know, when I was in TACT Club, my very first tournament was one of those tournaments that had that huge four-hour delay, maybe even six. And so who would ever come back if you didn't have a club? But we had a club. And so we were supported. And who remembers those days of the tournament delays? Or do we not want to admit that? <laughs> um, that's when we sent a dad out to go get ice cream and had ice cream up in the top floor. Yeah, it was fantastic. Anyway, I love my club, our club. It is, there's nothing like experiencing the true definition of iron 
sharpening iron. And of course, um, having been asked and then equally as intimidated to present today, what do I do? Of course, I run to my students that are here and I said, what's the most important thing about club to you? And one student said, it is the definition of iron sharpens iron. And I wouldn't have done as well or even stayed as long if I had not had a club. And I'm sure every one of you can attest to that because you've all been here way longer than me. Uh, but I've never witnessed in my seven years any of our students ever cutting each other down. I've never witnessed anything but our students wanting to build each other up. I've never witnessed anyone so happy to see someone else succeed <coughs> and those students in our club. I know I've seen that here. I've seen it here in the national stage. I've watched those students pray together, go in and compete against each other. And what's the best part? You know, when they're waiting down by the end to get their name called, to get up on that stage, they don't know what place they are, and they're genuinely happy for each other. Sure, that might be that sting a little bit, but in the end, it's the club. It's the club that continues to support that, and that is a beautiful thing. I love encouraging students. I love rejoicing with them when they succeed. I love crying with them when they think in their own eyes that they failed, but of course, I don't see it as a failure. It's just another way to grow, but we've invested. One of the best stories that I tell all the time is my favorite story of my little 13-year-old boy. He wasn't my boy. I call him my boy because every student is my own. And he, uh, he doesn't even compete anymore. He only competed for one year, but his success story, I think, is why we continue to do what we do. This kid wanted to come into the room. He had a speech about chickens. He wanted to tell us why chickens made the best pets, but he was terrified, slightly like I am right now, and he just wanted to come in and throw up on my shoes. He was, he, he wouldn't even let me see his speech. He cried for about a half an hour, we waited outside the room. This was just our first practice day after months and months and months of training and writing. And we finally got him to give the speech. He gave the speech for me, and then he had to actually go to a real tournament. He goes to his first real tournament. It was our only local tournament to him, and that's all. We, our club is tournament required. That's a huge, huge, huge part of it for us. It's tournament required. So he went to that tournament, and I said, you know what, for you, Josiah, you are going to take your script out of your pocket, which of course was folded 750 times, crushed and whatever. I said, you're going to take out that paper and you are going to read it, and you are not going to worry about the penalty for having that script in your hand. He was like, okay. By the end of that tournament, not only did that script not come out of his pocket, but he was playing games at the table with other students. He was laughing. He was having a great time. And that is success to me. That is fabulous. There's nothing like having a club. Because we have student coaches that provide feedback for students. They have grown so much this year. Heather and I were discussing that that's a real rose in our corner, that just our student leaders have been incredible in the way that they've encouraged and guided, offered blocking suggestions and these creative things that, you know, I uh, interp is my thing. And these kids sometimes out create me. It's fabulous to watch. But uh, another of my favorite stories, I had vocal cord surgery a few years ago really hard for the person who likes to talk a lot. And, you know, there was my student coach giving my feedback, um, you know, when I had written it, giving the feedback to the student. You don't get that outside of a club. Club is life-giving, and it's just never, it never gets old. I think that when you were going through the descriptors of it, stagnant has a, a very 
kind of negative and yucky connotation to it. We wouldn't say that we're stagnant, but we would definitely say that we're in a status quo at the moment. We've definitely ebbed and flowed. We've been, you know, 52 speech kids a few years ago to about 21-ish and then about, you know, 13 that kind of cling to it and they kind of get all, they kind of migrate and go with each other all year. It's, it's just a precious ebb and flow. So I, I don't really have any great wisdom to offer, but I can just say that without a club, um, I just don't think any of our students in our region, well, in our particular club area, would be where they are today without that support. So I hope that there's a nugget of encouragement there for you. Um, and I don't know who this Teresa Moon is, but boy, I'd like to be her. And um, I think that there, I think there's a little bit of a leadership crisis, right? I think that how are we training, right? The, I, I saw people standing here today. So if there's one thing that I can think of off the top of my head, how are we passing down our leadership ability or the confidence that we have to inspire that next generation to come along. And, and honestly, I'm not even sure that it's um, exclusive to NCFCA. I think it's all over. How do we continue to inspire leaders? Are we tight as two women? Are we taking someone along and under us and guiding them and bringing them to where they need to be? And that includes NCFCA. Are we encouraging others to come up and alongside? Are we identifying? And I think that's huge. Um, how do we inspire that confidence? It's like my 13-year-old kid. Just take out that piece of paper and just read it. It's just one little thing at a time. So I think that's what I have to share today. So we're gonna take just a quick break. I do wanna let you know that if you need to use the restroom, you can go out into the hallway and turn to the left. There are just a few doors down. Help yourself to a second cup of coffee because we have a lot more coming. While you are breaking, I would like you to keep something in mind and I want you to start brainstorming a question. And that question is, who are the people that we serve? Okay, so I don't want the answers, well, we serve students or we serve, because even within that category, if I were to say we serve students, who are those students? How are they similar? How are they different? What are the groupings of them that you see in your own club? Because part of what we're gonna talk about next is one of the challenges that clubs face. We're actually serving a lot of different people. And so we wanna acknowledge that and really look at that. So go ahead and take about five minutes. So we're gonna come back at 2.40, okay? So we'll see you back in just a minute.
part of, part of, oh, part of travel fairs. Fairs. This year we chose um, this weekend was our first in person. And that was in January, and then we hosted one in the beginning of the year. And then um, our regionals were we were right after the regionals in Omaha. There was another one in Kansas City, but our family opted not to be part of that. Hours like seven, eight hours. What I had been doing on Kelly is at dinner. As far as I was thinking, I guess our so um, yeah. So if you've been able to see here, you will be affiliated. It's a great event. I don't even know because video automatically catered is a discount for so that's always a question for all things judge interface. Yeah. Is. So, um, oh, how exciting. Thank you. But the director kind of has to be a little bit of a That's why I was just I'm like, okay, <laughs> interface. Oh, oh. This made sense to have a big Oregon group if we need to. Yeah, okay, you get it. <laughs> Crying because we had no idea what was going 
like your family but oh, yeah. home, <laughs> we're all crying I'm, upset, I'm frustrated because I don't know what's going on and then we're like go to Claudia no, I've never heard like, okay we know what's going on next week same exactly it was just, oh my gosh it was torture I'm like why are we doing this because I saw your face I saw your face If you can start making your way back to your seats, if you need to grab just one more cup of coffee, you could do that now. So I want to take just a moment to rapid fire, create a brainstorm word cloud in the sky of all of the different people that we serve as club leaders. Okay, so let's just start. Raise your hand if you have one. Yes. 
Community judges. Who else? Laura. Parents. parents. Okay. Are there any different types of parents? Can we subdivide that? Uh, nervous ones. Nervous <laughs> parents. Yes. <laughs> nervous parents. Yes. That was my story. When my son dragged us into this activity, somewhat kicking and screaming, he was 12. And I had six children, including a baby with special needs. And going to a tournament, you know, you, we talk about how fun and exciting tournaments. For me, it was terrifying to come to a tournament. Okay, Mead. Club leaders, we serve parents who have been in long enough to call them experienced parents but often behave like novice parents. <laughs> Fair statements. Yes, right here. We serve students. We serve students, yes. Okay, so let's break that down. Tell me about all the different types. We said nervous students. Let's just hover in the student world for a minute. What other kind of students? Yes. Students who are too focused on the competition side. Ooh, competition-focused students. We know what those look like. Right here. Thank you. Students with disabilities. Can we just go back for a second to think about our mission statement? We're challenging and equipping ambassadors for Christ. Does it mention an SAT score? Does it mention the ability to be able to speak and write? No. Listen, every one of our students is called to be an ambassador, and that means we have to shift to a growth mindset, not an end goal mindset. We are helping every student, wherever they're at, to make imperfect progress in this thing we call communications. Okay, other kinds of students. Yes. Oh, thank you for saying that. Lonely students. Do you have any students from your club? Thank you. Any students from your club that come to tournaments and you, every time you see them, they're alone? So we talk about how great community is here. But we have people who are sitting in corners by themselves. Right? So how do we, as club leaders, need to help train our families and our students to be missionaries, not just out in the world, but even people who will walk across the aisles in this place? Okay? Other kinds of students. Yes? I would say um, students who are really struggling with their faith and how ownership in this competitive realm looks like and feels and all of those other things. Thank you. Students who are struggling with their faith. Yes. Can we hover there for a second? There is no checklist that tells you do this and your student will suddenly fall head over heels in love with Jesus and be solidly grounded for the rest of their lives. It's a process. And we have to give our students space to wrestle, to grow, to make mistakes. I'm kind of glad God still gives me that space, right? I'm still growing. I, I just heard it here. Um, I've changed. The way I used to think about this is no longer the way I think about it now. So yes, we have to give our students room to grow and not assume that just because they're far from Jesus or maybe they have some of their ide ideologies a little bit confused right now, that that's their landing place. It's just a stepping stone to what God has for them. Any other kind of students? Yes? Unmotivated people who don't know who they are. Yes, but yes. The unmotivated or a student who doesn't know who they are. Yes. How about the overconfident that doesn't want too much feedback? Right. <laughs> I have arrived and I am smarter than you. Yes. We know who they are. Anybody have parents in your club like that too? <laughs> okay. Any other students before we move on? All right, we do have some folks that are bringing microphones because we're recording the session, so we just want to make sure we capture your thoughts. I just like quirky. Quirky students. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I, won't, I won't share the whole story, but I did watch a debate round once where a, a, a student passionately, and I mean passionately, delivered a speech on why we don't need voter IDs. And the argument that was presented to him was that you know, people are stealing the IDs of dead people. And his response was, but people that are dead don't care. <laughs> yes, you're going to have some quirky students. Awesome. All right, let's shift our attention for a moment to parents, okay? Because even parents are on a, a 
wide spectrum. So what kind of parents do you have in your club? Brand new homeschooling parents. Right, not just brand new to speech and debate, but brand new to homeschooling. Sometimes we'll have parents that will verbally praise and be excited and commit and then not show up <laughs> next week. Yes. The overzealous. <laughs> the drop-off parent. Yes. The drop off and sometimes the drop out parents. Yes, also, Katie. Parents with extenuating circumstances and hardships. Okay, and we all can agree that sometimes there are just those situations where we get to be the body of Christ and come alongside a family that's going through. And then we also can agree that sometimes there are families who live in that state. There is always an extenuating circumstance. Okay, back here. Parents who don't know how to recognize the gifts that they really, truly have and can share. Okay, that is a fantastic point. And I want to encourage you, if you've watched that in your club and you're wondering, how can I help that? Um, Leah Lamaster Horton is going to give a keynote address addressing that very thing. And her passion, I asked her, how did you, how'd you get into this? Like, what really motivated you and gave you this passion? And she said she had a student who came to her and said, Mrs. Horton, do you think that I could could be a nurse? And she said, well, sure, of course I think you could be a nurse. And she goes, because my mom thinks I'm not smart enough. Aww. Right? Sometimes we pigeonhole kids and we call them debate kids or speech kids or interp kids, and we assume that there's nothing else they could possibly do. But we want to have that growth mindset where we're helping our students realize you can learn anything. If you work at this, if you find a great way to study it, you can learn anything. Okay, other parents, yes. Parents who have a tendency to put too much pressure on their own children and expect too much too soon. Yes, I may resemble that statement. <laughs> I, I joke with people, but it's really not a joke. When my son was two, I went to my first homeschooling conference. I took a rolling suitcase for curriculum. <laughs> I went to a high school writing class and bought the curriculum for my two-year-old. <laughs> yeah, so I think that is a growth process too, right? A lot of times parents, and I think sometimes it's our own insecurities, right? We're homeschooling and we wanna make sure we don't miss anything. But our students need time and space to grow into their own skin. They're, they're growing into who God has called them to become not who we are fashioning them to become. Laura. And that's related. I was going to say parents who require their students to do certain events or certain classes. Um, Ooh, you just hit on the holy grail, and I don't know. That, that could be fighting I, words. I, that's something I did, so I can relate to that. Situation. Yeah, so we, we all have different perspectives on that, right? Some parents are like, you will do this event. This is just what we do. And other parents are like, no, I don't make my kids do anything. So we have to navigate that even within our clubs. Sometimes that can come into conflict, okay? Anyone else with a different kind of parent? Cindy, say that again. Very, very busy parent. I don't know any of those. <laughs> Cromer is laughing at me right now. Yes, busy parents. Busy parents, good. Sometimes there's high maintenance parents who just need their hand held for many years. <laughs> okay, and, and I, there is something about a high-maintenance parent because I have a child who uh, learns auditorily. And even if I send him an email, even if I detail out all of the events of the family or the plans, he's going to call me because he wants me to do that in an auditory fashion. He just wants me to restate it. So does anybody send out emails that you wonder if anybody reads because 32 people call you to ask you the questions? <laughs> yes. Yes, and we have to be careful, too, to set healthy boundaries, right? Your, your club members don't get you at 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it, except for Amy Joy. Okay, stop. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, you're stepping on my toes. Oh, I'm stepping on, yes, Kim, Kim has been known to text or call at 2 a.m. Okay. <laughs> 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 that was in the olden days. It's much better now. <laughs> the olden days, that's in yesterday. Okay. Um, <laughs> any other parent groups that you can think of? 
All right, I wanna move on to one other group of people that we serve as club leaders, and that is the NCFCA. So we're looking in one direction, and I want you to look at the other direction for just a second. How do you as club leaders fit into this NCFCA world? What are some of the people that you touch here? That are not our own. Right, other people, students, giving feedback, new, fresh feedback to someone else. That's great. Who else? Regional director. Ooh, the regional director. Let me tell you something. Our regional directors rock. I have stood in that role, and I cannot tell you a single other event that stretched me than being an RD. It is not an easy job. And when you guys serve them well, you make their job a joy, not a burden. Um, what's more, you help them to see who God really is. So true story, we had a tournament, early January tournament. Um, three weeks out, we had <laughs> 14 judge slots filled. And I have never been to the prayer room at our church. <laughs> And I was on my knees sobbing with a woman praying over me. And I watched the Region 6 people, club leaders, rally their troops to come together. And I just want to tell you, not only did that bless me, but it really helped me to see that God's got this. And it strengthened my faith to put my eyes on him and not just on what I could do, or even what the people around me could do. So yes, um, you definitely serve your RDs. Yep. Any other people in the league, in the in our volunteer staff that you touch? Yes. Um, sometimes one parent is very involved in the league or in the club, and then the other parent might show up in something like this, and that's an opportunity to really impact that person who hasn't really gotten the supervision or been impacted and we can really have a lot of fun especially if they're a dad you can just love those and that, that's a lot of fun and, yeah it can really impact them. okay so he is talking about dads and our rds rock but so do our ncfca dads right i am so thankful for you dads who show up i, I want you to know that that doesn't just impact your children, it, it makes a statement to other children as well. And we are so grateful for you when, when you are able to come. I know, I know there are jobs and other things that have to be done, but we're grateful for you. Okay, anyone else? Yes. Oh my goodness. Can I get a call out for Diana and Nancy? Yes. So, the point of this activity is to help you understand that as a club leader, if all you had to think about was a 12-year-old student who is new to NCFCA and needs the basic skills to learn how to write a platform speech, your jobs would be really, really easy. But that's not your story. Your story is ministering to all of these different types of people groups. So in our last activity that we're gonna take together, I want you around your table to pick one of those. Be specific, don't say students, because there are a thousand different types of students. So really in that first box on your handout, write who are we considering and give me some description about that person. We're gonna do this in rapid fire, so this is gonna be like popcorn responses within your groups because I'm only gonna give you four minutes per topic. And you're gonna try to write down as many things as you can. But as you do that, don't just think about them, Imagine what it would be like to be them. Think about the onboarding process to your clubs, to our league, to the region, right? Put yourself in their shoes and try to imagine what they really experience. So the first question here is who are we considering? What are they like? What situation are they in? What's their role in that situation? And what else is going on in their lives, okay? Four minutes on the clock. Oh, 
heard it. My daughter would be able to answer that because she knows all things trivia of it. We did talk about the Queen of Wands. Yeah, so the one that wants to like the game while you're trying to start. Okay, friends, your next question is, what does this person, the specific person that you've identified, what do they need to do? What do they need to learn? How do they need to grow? What tasks do they need to accomplish? And what decisions do they need to make? Okay, so take four minutes on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But have we done it? Do and we're like. 
like we could have them. Then we would excuse the snack together, and then we'll do that, and then send them back to go get snacks. And we would make them carry them up another 30 feet and do that, you know, in the curriculum. I have a feeling this is going to cost time. This is going to be hard. Your students may not want to do it. They're definitely going to find it. Might be, yeah, 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 that's what I was going to like go to, you know, out not a class or like the same alphabetical yeah. order. Yeah. 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 Figuring yeah. out the yeah. lunch yeah. device. That's what I was thinking is we had to have a non alphabetical cheese. We did So then, so then it's the accountability part. If but, the teacher but, giving them but, yeah, that sure. information up front and they say, yes, I'll do it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they sign up for the tournament, then we give them down. Yeah. After they sign up. The, I think that's a... <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, like, every new people, even people who have no intention of not doing anything, a lot they of just don't know. So maybe that's like, the communication like, thing like, of, yeah. 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 I still have yet to get a text, by the way. I don't get any text messages. I am not complaining. I am not complaining because I'm on my computer all the time, but I'm like, where are they at right now? I am affiliated and I am signed up for this tournament. Exactly. Everything should be there. I thought maybe that was why I wasn't. I'm even signed up. I'm just like, are they getting it or? There haven't been a lot popping in here. These are things are going well, so there's not a like. I mean, yes. There's no screaming on the phone. Uh huh. Yeah. Here, the other mom who was just totally on her phone. Yep, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Right. Nobody's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you say nay, I say? I mean, like it'd be nice to left. I mean, I suppose every teacher should have a nay. It would be nice to have a nay. She's really requesting it. Everyone's back the same one. The same English I brought to the child. But that's as far as I can get. And yet, that's true. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm thinking about those CC. That's what I was just thinking. The CC yeah, trifles. You can have an NCSDA trifle. Right, one of those. Yeah, they have all the. Yeah, yeah. and then the new parents buy it for 10 bucks. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's always there. This is your chosen curriculum. The one that is really for today. It's your way or the highway. That is the opposite for kids. And my kids were standing right there because two of them. And they yeah. laughed out loud. They're like, oh, you're for no. And I just stepped yeah. back and looked at them. Because she was on her porch because it was just like, our kids are so strange. I know. I think why we've had a hard time getting to like do the line on parents coming every time is there are so many situations, you know, that like we have, you know, even in our my own case, we have a tiny daughter involved in both camps. But I'm thinking if he wasn't available, how would I want my kids to call us? It's hard, but I see the need. I see the need. Do we get those that we can, or they, can we get in for at least hitting the third? Say they have to sign up five times a semester. So well, I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, it's been hard. And that goes too far. You know, thinking about it, we're like, that's what I tear our students. These are the kinds of things that the yeah. media class is yeah. like, um, they're possible. So I, yeah. I know because you come around the table, you have to do something. She really has. Oh, no, you don't have 
was your thing. I was like, okay, I mean, some I've maybe only seen a few. You <laughs> can only do so much. I mean, and I think that that's the bad. You don't require them to do that. But so we highly recommend it. I mean, the parents or the students are there. Students have to be there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, the parents, we just say, you're going to not see a lot, you know, I was desperate my first year, like, oh, I got to be there, I got to be listening, you know, <laughs> um, but some of these kids, are, and their kids are doing well, they're just kind of self-starter, want to, they've caught the vision and the other kids are helping, we have really good older kids helping younger kids working on, but we're um, organized, we see them doing well, but yeah, just makes it hard on Finding judges, finding people that are willing to like lead these different areas, and I feel like now, and then, like this has been a I've been for eight years. Nobody has identified the other set of parents. We had a bunch graduate. We had a huge group who just kind of graduated. Oh, so in my mind, you see it happen once here, just do and maybe you off, show mercy and don't even say anything. But by the second time, and, and, and then you don't want to wait. We had, yeah, so now we only had so by the second out of the 26, I noticed that I have 27 if we count my son as an LD by himself. But and again, this um, is exactly seven summer. of those. We've <laughs> just been busy. So, yeah, it was a lot. But they've all now, I think parents are catching the vision. I think we have a lot of excited parents who wanted to do summer stuff that we're barely doing anything during the year. We're going to shift again. So the next question to consider about your person is, what do they see? What do they see in the marketplace of ideas? So this might be, what are the competing ideas that are out there, competing activities? Um, what do they see in their immediate environment? That could be their home or their club. What do they see others doing? And what are they reading and watching? And how is that influencing them? So go ahead and take, we're gonna, now we're gonna get faster and faster. So this is gonna be three minutes. For us, so we are part of the challenge. We still do our instruction there. So many other club museums. What they see.
Okay, next up we have what do they say? What have we heard about them? Or what have we heard them say about club? What can we imagine them saying about club? And I love this idea. How would they say what they want to say? Would they say it to you? Would they say it to someone else? Would they post it? How, how do they communicate? So go ahead and take three minutes on that. Okay, so how do you finish what you were yeah. It's kind of about that, too. Yeah. 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 So she registered for a tournament, but then the office got word, probably through you, that how did they find out that she was only going to go one day? We talked about it. I told Brenda because we knew these were involved and there would be a crowd and there would be a guy so and it wasn't like we didn't get it either. I heard she was going to be like, let me show up one day and see how that was. Yeah, could you share that? I want your You're a planner. I feel like I feel like that information is floating around, but like we don't have it. And, and everyone does it. Everyone else like tries to do it, and it always comes out a little bit more. Was it not in a place to receive it? Yeah, I do think about that. I think we had information some of the time, but then it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't lag anywhere anymore. <laughs> See, the only thing I'm thinking is like, it might have been totally planned, <laughs> but it was going to the first tournament, yeah. but I was like, this is it, I don't even, this is a quote, but, right. but I don't, yeah, I, I needed to see she then, like, what, when she got the email from you all, tried to get a refund and just, I mean, that was, yeah. not <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a, it gets a gradual, like, oh my goodness, okay, we're, this is totally fine, whatever, this is fine, so it's going to provide and we're going to do all, um, but I would not have been there four years ago. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like you have to, like, set the hook, like, yeah, <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to say, so I always say, you I think know, you're going to want it to take over that. I say soft pitch, yeah. you know. You could turn that into a 
turn the tables just a little bit. We're going to ask the question, what do they hear? What are they hearing others say? This one is really convicting for me. What are they hearing club leaders say? What's happening on our watch? What are our children seeing, right? We're supposed to, we're supposed to model for them constructive community. How are we doing that as leadership teams within our own clubs? What are they hearing from their friends? And then what are they hearing from the league? So take three minutes on that. I thought we landed today, but I have two thoughts. One is, I love what they're saying. When we had a club, we were trying to meet everybody's needs. We were pretty good. But anyone you know who knew you really did grow, we had a very small, we've always had a very small club. Um, I'm so impressed with how that, that's how we did our first circle. So at some point, we have, I don't know, 25 or 18 people. They just, like, <laughs> something's not working. They're all okay. And they're not afraid to, like, they, you know, they just, like, make all of that happen. And then the 80% moved and said, oh, no, we're not, we're just, we're, we're not doing, we're not moving forward. Even though we said, you have to be a part of all those kind of things. So after that point, and part of it was we put ourselves in the what happened? We our see. kids that were a lot of getting older are getting nothing from us and they're kind of floundering doing their own thing because we got all these beginners. Yep. So after that, we learned okay, we want for our kids, as leaders of the club, this is what we want. This is what we're willing to do. Now we're going to invite you in to do what we are doing. We're not going to do what you want to do. If you want to do it, and we trust your leadership and your statement of faith and whatever, then you can do that. But we are not going to do it. In this particular year, we are only doing LT and speaking most heartbreaks. You want team policy? Go to another So, what are we doing? Yeah, that's what we're doing. I really think we got them. They're in for quite a thing. I just feel like if you speak your judgment, you are not responsible for anybody else, and you don't see some of the meet anybody else's. They're going to be like, and so I know. You know, the right spot was, and if it doesn't look good, you did. Here's our criteria, and you have to meet these criteria. You know, so if you had somebody that was kind of more open, like saying, oh, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Then another option would be line items, like at the medical office or general office, line items, initial, line item, initial, line item, initial. You know, I'll, these are all the things I'm willing to do, and I'm initialing them so that you talk to each one of them. You know, that would, doesn't sound like that person would have been. And you might not have even known. That's part of it. In the beginning, when they would say, okay, 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 okay. So, like, oh, thank you. So, I have a meeting on. somebody right. initially, right. Uh, you know, yeah. 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 I need you to help, and this I need to prepare so you up with an experience to go to the exact person you have to go to the so parents, what are those? Yeah. We don't have experience yeah. parents with somebody who's coming from this year into next year, yeah. we do have a meeting now. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. If they were here last year, 
they know more than the new players. So we do have, a, I have some few ladies that are back that are really yeah, just, that are just yeah, and they're experienced. Yeah. Yeah. In that they're all experienced. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of people like that. I'm always telling Lisa, I have to go judge what kids are like. You know, like all the kids, I'm and I'm like, my best friend. It was a nice journey, but they're like having fun still. It's 10 o'clock. They're going to go to my school. Okay, I can sleep when I'm dead. You know, but it is, it is really, it's such a family. It's so great. I love how the older kids. Speech and how it works. There's, there's no kids who have so many kinds of speeches, and then there's also speech announcements. Like I was just about next year's speech. We had a great Everybody was so nice. Like even club, the, you know. Okay, last but not least, what do your people think and feel? You know, we went through this whole exercise because what I want you to really understand is that these are living, breathing human beings, and they all come with their own stories and their own fears and their own hopes. And we as club leaders have an opportunity to intersect them and to help them to grow. So think about your person and their fears and their frustrations, their hopes and their dreams, and how you as a club leader could interact with them in a way that is going to help them to grow. Okay, if two minutes, and then we're going to hear from Lori Kraut, who's going to talk to us about a few updates that are happening. So, They don't make a choice, and then with everything, and then the kids collapse, right? It's, but they're hopeful, right? They want to be a part of the story. They want to be a part of the story. Uh huh. By God, do the right thing. Not good. Is it like mind map kind of? God wants to be a part of the story. Here's what you can tell me. I think my son is useful. More like little children to your left. Yeah. <laughs> This was Georgetown. No. Oh, it's a, I, was, I know a couple of years ago. Like, I'm it's not interesting. Yeah. Top notch. Right. And respectful. Yeah. I seem to like wearing a tie. Right. And I think it's a nice way to compare They put the boundaries right. there, you know. And they rise to this. Right. You know, I hope, and I mean, but there's a lot of this peer pressure like I've never seen. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of changed them, yeah. uh, made them. Love to meet kids, but you know, just wasn't. It was a level I never even thought you got far to get. Right. <laughs> far, far. That's another issue. That's another issue. Yeah. And so, um, but they, 
positive group and uh, I remember when I just well, knew this I don't know that I've seen it to that extent. I like being bigger, older than kids. I want that, you know. I don't think I've been there. I think it's more that when I confront them, you know, I know I just don't know how to put it all in. No, I'm just too scared to, to give feedback. I'm just amazed every time. I My husband gave a dissolution. So now it's just like those different ideas. Different ideas. Okay, friends, we have just a few last minute thoughts for you. So now that you've had a chance to really think about who this person is, think about this idea. How can we foster constructive community for that individual in our homes, in our clubs, in our regions, and in our league? As you leave this place, this idea of building one another's up is fundamental to what you do. It's fundamental to what we do together. And we really want to meet the needs of the people that God has entrusted to us and we want to be open that there might be a whole lot more that God wants us to do and other people groups that he wants us to reach. So be thinking about that. Be talking about that in your clubs. If any of you are willing to have a conversation about that, we'll have some opportunities to do that that you'll hear about. So next I'd like to call to the stage Mrs. Lori Crouch. She's our speech committee chair. She's going to give you just a sneak peek at the speech rules updates. Thank you. It is a delight to be here with you this afternoon. This morning at the speech roundtable, I had an opportunity to share a presentation that allowed everyone here to see the process that we go through on the speech committee the entire year from the time that we first begin receiving input from you until a new speech event or new speech rules are presented at the national championship. So if you would like to see that presentation, and I know you all want to see that, you need to come back this afternoon at the other speech round table at 4 o'clock. I will be here to share that presentation. So there's incentive to come back again. Very quickly, I'm just excited to be here representing the speech committee. And we have exciting announcements right now for you at this tournament. We have all of the speech events are still going to be titled the same. Um, we won't be bringing in any, any new speech events. However, there are significant rule changes to three speech events, and that's what I'm just going to briefly share with you. The first is after dinner speaking, and I'm going to read the definition for after dinner speaking for the 2023 tournament season, and that is, entertains with humor while communicating a theme relevant to a mock audience. And if you're curious about a mock audience, you need to come back this afternoon. <laughs> the next event that has significant rule changes for 2023 is biblical presentation. And the definition for 2023 for biblical presentation reads, develops one, two, or three selections of scripture and presents the selection with a chosen visual aid. Finally, the third event that has a significant rule change is our open interpretation event. This event has been kind of married to original interpretation, interpretation for several years, and it's been a little bit problematic to have that happen because the, both of those events have very dissimilar goals. So for the 2023 season, original interpretation will not be included in open interpretation. However, there is a new event coming in 2024 that will really um, capture the skills that the students that love to compete in that original interpretation event, it'll, it'll help them to really develop those skills. And we're excited to hear from all of you as we um, go forward to create that new event. So please come back this afternoon and we'll share more. Okay, 
From education, I want you to hear that we are busy at work trying to create resources and training opportunities that will help you as club leaders, will help your parents to grow, and it will help your students. So as you know, we have curriculum available, and that's going to continue to be available in print form, and you can purchase that at the store in Billy Graham if you're interested. But I also want to let you know that we have an exciting project underway, and we are currently working on four separate curriculum packages for apologetics, for speech, for policy debate, and for value debate. And so we, are, we have a great team that is working on that. Those are going to be 18-week packages that your students can earn for high school credit. We are also working with our friends in the Christian schools that they might also be able to use those where they're at as well. So if you have any interest in contributing to that project or if you have any experience or education in curriculum design or in accreditation, we would love to talk with you. And you are always welcome to email me at amyjoytofte at ncfca.org. In addition, last year we had several online intensives and we attempted to do what we called the one-room schoolhouse, right? Bring everyone together, have them all work together. And, and we had a great time. We did hear quite a bit of feedback, though, that we had two very separate groups of people. We had folks who were brand new to the events, and we had folks that really wanted a deeper dive. And so that's what we're doing this year. So if you have students that you want to just get their toes wet in this activity, and you want to do that in a fun and engaging way, that's the purpose of those camps. Those camps are going to be fun. That is the primary focus of introducing skill base, but in a really fun and engaging way. And then the one-day online intensives are really geared towards two groups of people, you and your advanced students. So those events are going to be a deep dive into our resolutions. We will have experts that are coming. We will have members of our debate committee that have been researching those resolutions for nine months, and they're going to pour into your students and get them launched into really great research. The biblical and after-dinner speaking events now you understand why we are having intensive on those, because we're going to help the students to really understand the changes and how they can grow in those two speech events. If you haven't already gotten a flyer, you're welcome to pick one of these up on your way out. Also, I do want to let you know, if your students want to attend live, they can do that. They can register as an online student. Um, you could also register for that as a family and as a family, you'll get the recordings and all of the exercises, the worksheets, the, the packet that goes with that. And you can also do that as a club. So if you have more than four students that want to meet together as a club, the club option is a really great uh, opportunity for you. It'll be very cost effective. So with that said, last but not least, I'm going to invite to the stage our executive director who has some parting words for you. Thank you, Amy Joy. What a privilege to share with you. You guys really are, you're, you're the very lifeblood of what we do. Without you, without you doing what you do, um, NCFCA would not exist as it does today. And so, on your table, you're going to find these little business card holders. I'd love for you to pop it open. Take a look at this template. I know some of you are like, well, we're just a small little club, but it's always nice to just be able to share with a family who says, I might be interested in speech and debate, to hand them this. You'll note on the back, it says, proudly training students for competition in the NCFCA Christian Speech and Debate. Um, so this is just a little takeaway for you guys. It's the beginning of a resource package that we're putting together for you all um, for things that we can do for you as a group that would be helpful. Because I'll be honest with you, NCFCA continues to build its business model as well. And some of you are thinking, but we're small, we don't really need a business model. There are some very important things that you need, even just for your own protection, for the protection of your, of your families who are serving in leadership, um, for the protection of your mission. You know, some of you are even thinking we don't even have a mission statement. So on July 25th, that's a Monday, we're going to do a session where um, we'll talk about the important parts of building a club, of, of the things that you need to be sure 
that you have in place as a club for your own protection, for your own planning, for your own policies, for your procedures. And of course, they're best practices. They're not mandates. Um, they're just things that we have learned. You guys have watched us live walk out figuring out the best safety practices that we can have as an organization to protect our young people, okay? I know you share that passion. You don't serve the way that you do um, in order to have something happen on your watch. And it's not, there's nothing bulletproof, okay? There's a lot of prayer involved and the Lord is very faithful, um, but we do live in a fallen world and there are really important things for you guys to know. Um, so um, we are gonna continue to build that resource package with some opportunities to work together with practice events. You guys, many of you run practice events already in the, um, especially in the preseason, in the fall. So we're gonna work with you this year to see ways that we can help you and that you can help us. We are looking forward, um, not for this coming season, but we are looking forward um, to some new tournament structures um, so that we can have an opportunity for, to meet the needs of families where they are. So shorter tournaments, some one day type things, some speech only, some debate only, that actually tie to our qualification system, okay? NCFCA is a, um, a web of connectivity. So when we talk about changing tournament structure, it affects qualification. When we think about qualification, we have to think about what does that mean for nationals? What does that mean for regionals? So we're gonna take our time and do that well, but in the meanwhile, we also wanna have you help us figure out the best ways to make that happen. And so practice events are a really good opportunity to be able to do that. Um, one of the other things that we wanna do that I heard you guys say from early on today was the difficulty that, that folks have in forming clubs, in being feeling like they are able to start clubs. So we are actually putting together, I'm pleased to announce, a new position um, with a club support coordinator. Mrs. Mead Vest is gonna come up. She is, she is stepping out of her regional director role but not leaving us and we are super thrilled about that. And Mead is going to kind of walk alongside club, new club leaders, maybe novice club leaders, to answer questions, really to do kind of a, well, why don't you come on up? I'll let her share just a couple sentences about what her vision is. And we're, we're figuring it out, so you guys are going to be part of that as well. But Mead has a, obviously a wealth of, of experience to share with new club leaders. Mead? Thank you very much. I am super excited about this role. I've been in the league for 20 years and a club leader for a very long time. I've seen lots of ebb and flow and people coming in and out. I've also seen how the region, uh, excuse me, how the league has really changed over that time and has realized how important clubs are. Not that they weren't important before, but they, they have since realized that if clubs begin to die, NCFCA will not sustain. And so um, helping to support clubs has become a real important task for NCFCA. And so this is a great opportunity for me to be able to come alongside new clubs, existing clubs that are kind of floundering and trying to figure their way, even if it is, it is a club that has been going for some time, but leadership has kind of walked off because they've all graduated and then there was a break or two and somebody new is coming in. They weren't trained by the past leader and so they're gonna want somebody to come walk beside them. And so that is really my vision here is to be able to kind of be a mentor and coach to walk beside you and help you put some firm foundation in place, set up some parameters, not only that will help you at our table, we were talking about this a little bit, but help you as a leader be a great leader to the people that you are entrusted with without encroaching so much on you that you have no time for your own children who you have here for a reason to invest in. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, this role coming up in this coming year, if you know of somebody who wants to start a club, if you are a new club leader, if you have questions, of course you can go to your RD. They are always available. They are also busy. So you can, I know this, I, I've been there. 
Um, so you can go ahead and contact me, Mead Vest, M-E-A-D-V-E-S-T, at ncfca.org. Thank you. Thank you, Mead. I'm super excited about that new opportunity to serve you all. One other thing, I'm going to give a plug for our website. We are working on some redesign for the club pages. I would love to see all pictures when I look at the find a club section. So you guys, if you've got some of your club members here this week, grab a club picture. Um, if you have a camp this summer, grab a club picture. Um, we'd love to have those smiling faces represented there. That really does serve as a jumping off point for folks for your club to be able to um, have some advertising and share about what you're doing in your local area and we really do wanna support you in that way. Um, we're even looking into some additional ways that we can, can continue to develop that for the club that you would actually then be able to jump off to your, to your own web page um, and that you would have control really to be able to design those. So we're partnering with our friends at GDN Media. Um, the Gallifreys are, have been fantastic partners as we've, as we've built our own website and they're gonna continue to work with us to help you all as clubs. So with that, I think we are significantly over our time and we'll take a few minutes um, just to pray and then we will um, go ahead and dismiss this and then get ready to get started with speech in just a few more minutes. So let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful for your provision. Lord, you love us in ways that we don't even know how to ask for. Lord, you have, have put all things good in front of us, and we know that all good things are from you, and we are grateful for that. Lord, I thank you for this group of people before me and who represent others who are back in their homes, who pour in selflessly and tirelessly to be able to equip our children. Lord, I pray that you will bless and redeem their time, that you will um, encourage them that following a busy week and a busy season, that you'll give them a time of rest um, and a time of rejuvenation as they start to think forward for the next season. Lord, I thank you for their diligence and their impact on the families that they touch. Lord, I pray um, that the families see more of you through what we do. Lord, I know that what we look out into when we look across our clubs, across our organization, sometimes we don't always see exactly what we were hoping to see. But Lord, you, you give us hope. You give us encouragement. You give us vision. We know your plan is good, and we trust you with that. And so I just thank you and praise you for what you're doing in and amongst the families that are represented here, for the club, for the club families that are, that are represented through their leaders here. Lord, you are a good God and yet a wonderful Father who gives us things that, um, that we need exactly when we need it. And I pray that you will continue to meet the needs of the club leaders who are here today. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you all for coming. Grab a cookie to go. <laughs> or go to grab and go and they'll be there. <laughs> Meeting you.